Coach, I know you, you hate to see a guy like Martin Emerson go out so early in the game for targeting, but on the other side of that, what did you think of Decam and, and what he did to come in there and fill in his shoes? Yeah, Decam did a nice job. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what play of the game that was, third play or probably no more than about five in at most. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he played every snap the rest of the game. Decam did, and uh, I, you know, I don't think he gave up a catch, a reception in man coverage. Uh, you know, there's probably a couple things technique-wise here and there that Coach McBath will be wanted to watch with him or get some things cleaned up. But for the most part, he uh, he performed admirably, admirably, and did his job. You know, relative to you know whatever his assignment was in the overall call. So. I know, it could, I know it could be different but depending on the situation, but you almost as a coach prefer to have guys not even think about it and just pop, go in there and not yeah, have time think to think about it. Me, me and Coach McBath, I think we kind of joked about that. It's probably worked out for the best the way it did because, you know, if someone had told me, hey, you're going to be without Martin for the entire game, I'd be pretty nervous. Uh, so it's probably a good thing for me. And then obviously I think for DK, there's no time to think about it. Hey, you're up. So, and he did a nice job. I'm proud of him. Well, Sean Preston kind of stepped in there and did a good job. What did you kind of see from Preston and obviously the pick, but beyond that, what did you kind of see? Like I said, uh, you know, we're, we're to that time of the year, right, where you got to have a next man up mentality and uh, there's no excuses. You got to find a way to get the job done. And obviously, those are two great examples of that D cam. And then, and then Sean did some really good things. Obviously, uh, you know, they went to take a shot there at, right after, the, I think it was right after the targeting, the, the very next play. And he, he intercepts the pass. That's a big time play. I mean, that completely. Flipped some momentum, so he, he did some good stuff. For Cam Young to come down with an interception, what does that say about your D-line making plays like that? <laughs> yeah, I think mean, uh, the ball bounced our way several times the other night. Obviously, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take that whenever we can get it. Uh, but on that particular, right, that's that's a credit to a guy flipping and starting to chase the football. Tyrus gets his hands up and, and bats, a, you know, a dig route, tips the ball up in the air. And because Cam's the kind of guy who's going to turn and chase the football, good things happen when you do that. So. Uh, it's it's good to see those things that you you talk about in meetings and try to to preach that hey there's going to have a benefit you never know when but you know there, good things happen when you're willing to run of the ball now we have actually have a clip we can show D linemen and you know show them they get interceptions for it along those lines of, of you talking about next man up uh, when Sean gets dinged up and Corey Ellington pops in there it seems like you you've mentioned him in previous weeks I and told you to I told you he, you don't be surprised if you see him in there and he's played some spe he's played some special teams now. Yeah. All right, so he's been on there on special teams, done some good stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was his time. So he had to go in there and, uh, you know, wet his beak a little bit. He did a good job. Uh, we were glad to get Sean, you know, back out there. Uh, but, yeah, no, I think you'll see more Corey as the season goes on. J.J. Jefferson looks more like a linebacker than a quarterback, Arkansas quarterback. Just what do you tell your unit about defending that guy? Capable of a lot of different things. <laughs> Better put a couple extra – layers of padding on underneath shoulder pads, man. You're, uh, I mean, he, he runs around you, over you, through you, not to mention the, the stable of running backs they have. I mean, we're, we're talking about the number of the fourth best rushing offense in the country right now, averaging 250 yards a game. And uh, so there's a lot of a lot of sleepless nights right now on the defensive staff because when a team can can line up and impose their will on you, you know, that way and, and march the ball down the field, uh, running the football, that's, that's not a very very fun feeling as a defense. And so we have quite the challenge ahead of us. You guys are the fourth best run defense in the country. How have you felt about the run defense so far this year? Uh, uh, there, there, there have been times we've been pretty good. I mean, on the other, you know, last game we did some good stuff. Um, you know, there's also been games where we haven't stopped it very well. Uh, you know, I think the, probably the one, the one thing that goes unnoticed on some of that stuff is, you know, the, the way our offense is operating right now, and how efficient they're being, and we are possessing the ball for quite a while, and that limits plays that we're playing on defense. And depending on the situation in the game, right? You, if you have a lead, then a lot of teams don't want to run it very much. So, uh, you know, I, I think our our stats might be a little inflated in that regard. Um, there's certainly nothing inflated to what Arkansas does. I mean, they are. No matter who the opponent is, you turn on the tape, they are successfully marching the ball down the field, running it at them. And so uh, and our guys have seen the tape, and they know we better be ready for quite the challenge. Dominique Johnson, I think they announced him today as the starting running back. Obviously, they, they have some depth there as well. But what do you kind of see from him as they're kind of trying to get him some more snaps? Uh, yeah, I mean, every, every guy's got the ability to you know, make the skip cuts and bounce and get on the perimeter. 
Uh, they got good patience. They know when to wind it back or, you know, let the seam develop up inside and hit it. And I was, I was flipping through the stats the other day, and it just seemed like every guy you go down, right, is averaging probably, you know, more certainly more than five a carry. And, you know, all right, hey, this guy's out. Who's the next guy? Oh, he's got 500 yards rushing, too. What about the next? Oh, he's got 500 yards rushing. You know, I mean, they're, no matter who they got in there, they're, they're creating positive plays. And then, and then the receivers, I mean, Burke's on the outside. He's as big and physical a specimen as there is. I'm, uh, he creates some serious matchup nightmares for you. So uh, the offense is, they got a great scheme. They got a great coordinator who, you know, they've been running this offense for a long time. They know the ins and outs. They know exactly how people try to, to defend them. And they know it, it feels like every play you watch, you know, they're holding the pin last on the chalkboard. They got the answer. And so uh, tremendous job by Coach Browse and his staff. What does Colin Duncan mean to this defense? Uh, I think it's like every other guy, right? I mean, you got to do your one eleventh. Obviously, Colin's a uh, uh, he got he got thrown into significant increased action last year, and I would say after we watched the film, he was probably the most improved guy on the defense last year, and he's done a nice job this year. You know, he's been a starter the whole time. Um, you know, I. I'd probably be mistaken. I, I I don't know inside the locker room if he's kind of the emotional leader or the talker on the defense. I have no idea. But uh, he's done a nice job of executing his job and, and doing what we ask of him and does his 111th. You said uh, he was the most improved player on the defense last year. What was he struggling with early on? Well, I just think, you know, he wasn't initially a starter. And then due to some injuries and just him performing well in practice, he got his chance. And... Uh, you know, and did better than I, I guess I would have expected, right? Or I, or I, or I undervalued him, uh, underestimated him. Um, you know, obviously it's been a while since those games last year, but I can remember a couple picks, some really good ones. Um, you know, some good good open field tackles, and you know, you play in the secondary now. There's a lot of those, a lot of those out in space plays. So, uh, yeah, I think, I, you know, we're reviewing the film from last year. I thought he was probably our most improved guy from when he first got, you know, from when the season started to what he finished playing for us as a starter, and he's just taken off from there.